Good morning, folks. We've just got a couple shots of Hurricane Matthew to start here. We won't focus on this storm today as coverage of the hurricane and other media outlets is overshadowed only by what people say when they forget a microphone is on. Worst is over, but local areas still do have flood alerts. Eyes open there. In terms of the sun and the earth, we're in a bit of a calm period. Those following us on Twitter saw the alert map last night, but no, we did not yet have an earthquake alert at all and likely wouldn't until tomorrow night. Let's break it down, starting over at spaceweathernews.com and finding the last day on our star was calm once again, at least on the earth-facing side. A couple filaments and surface surges occurred at the northern filament and the southern coronal hole, but they are nothing about which to fret. Solar flaring remains low even as the sunspots grow in number and complexity. Earth-facing quiet hasn't let this guy make a peep as he heads for the limb. Southern big guy has negative red, attempting to put a gamma class there by cutting off the southeastern positive umbras. And our loner, bringing up the rear, isn't exactly alone anymore. Earth-facing quiet, quelling all three. The solar wind is calm as well. Streams have normalized and Earth's magnetic shield is holding steady as she goes. As we see coronagraphs, you should notice a halo eruption, the circle coming out from behind the glare blocking disk. This halo means that either a CME was fired directly at Earth or directly away from us as the expanding solar plasma cloud takes the same appearance along this line. It did indeed come from the far side of the sun, directly away from Earth, a large filament ripped away near center disk from Stereo A's vantage point behind the sun. While it won't hit Earth, it will couple along with another CME as we begin the week, and at that time we expect the southern coronal hole to have spun in and directly face Earth to make a quake watch. Updates coming on Twitter and in tomorrow's news. Interesting article out about the newest solar flare study in CubeSat. Checking out brightness and energy at every moment, from preparation of a solar flare to the drawing back of X-ray release. Top story today is about two new studies that also can't find the sterile neutrino. This follows the Nobel Prize work which took a shotgun blast to the standard model of physics when they proved these particles likely indeed have mass. NOAA gave us a climate update for September. They say the temperatures at night were much warmer than expected, with multiple records set, but daytime did not manage to get as hot. By the way, if you're interested in the other half of the climate change story, the problems with the warming-only discourse, we had ADAPT 2030 on our Fly on the Wall podcast yesterday for a mini Ice Age outlook. Anyway, folks, if you missed the last two days, we've made lots of updates to our conference info page, including the first of a number of previews of conference material. Because my birthday is in October, if you book your tickets this month, you'll get a gift from us, two free months membership on the website, and chances to win a copy of our new book at the conference itself. When you book your tickets, just send me an email. The speakers, their talks, the schedule, the venue, all of that can be found at the info page. We'd love to see you out in the high desert next April, and as always, this is a speaker's access event, which means you don't just hear us talk, we spend the majority of the time out among you guys having fun and talking, even networking. You'd be amazed at what's come out of the friendships made at these conferences. Only thing is, if you come, I may make you shake my hand and listen to me tell you how much we appreciate your support. We have pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.